Hey friends, what's up? Kaz here. Welcome back to another Minecraft server admin tutorial. Now, if you're joining me for the first time, feel free to hit that subscribe button below. I do these every week. If you have a suggestion, feel free to uh, note that below as well. I record those and will give you a shout out if I do the tutorial like this week. This one has been suggested by Split Run and is actually one of my favorite uh, mini games in Minecraft. If you've watched my channel for any amount of time, this is called Minequake and it is created by Tiger Hicks and it's it's modeled after Quakecraft on Hypixel. So if you haven't uh, been on my channel for very long, I play a lot of Quakecraft. It's a great, fun little uh, mini game. And this plugin is really cool. It's um, it's actually pretty easy to set up. It's a little bit complicated at first, but um, it's actually pretty straightforward and simple. So that's why I'm doing this tutorial. Let's get into it. First thing we're going to do is we're going to set up an arena, and then we're going to set the hub configure the signs, go over permissions, which won't take long at all, and then the big part at the end is to configure the shop. So feel free to hit the annotations here if you want to jump to a section of the video, because this video is going to be a little bit longer than most of them. Let's get into it. Actually, I don't I don't even need this, this diamond hoe. I just like to have it out. So we've um, side note on this. If you like this uh, the seed, so check that out. Um, because you spawn right next to the village. And I thought this would be a perfect uh, setup for the first arena. So first thing we need to do, we actually don't even need to be in the arena at first, but you want to do Quake Admin Arena Create. And then the arena ID. Now this number needs to be completely unique to this arena. We're going to do one. And then the name of it. Now this does not need to be unique. This name can be uh, repetitive. This is what's going to show up once they join and what's going to show up on the sign for the joining the uh, matches. So I do not have permission for this command. That is interesting. Okay, side note on that. Let's try that again. There we go. <laughs> we'll go over the permissions at the end. So it says arena created, but no spawns yet. So this is probably going to walk you is essentially going to walk you through which is really cool so what you want to do is we want to get down here on the ground and set some spawns let's set it uh let's do it actually tells you the uh, command so we're going to quake admin arena spawn one so this number is the arena id remember that unique number that we selected so there we go we're going to add one spawn there and then we're going to add another spawn here so we just keep hitting up and hit that command again and um let's see how many should we do probably like four i suppose let's put one out in the open here which is probably not the best idea but whatever um there we go so we set four spawns the next thing that we need to do is we need to set the match now this seems a bit repetitive and uh all right, so the last step of this is just to initialize this, the match, essentially, or finish the setup. It seems a little bit repetitive, but you're going to do Quake Admin Match Create, and then the uh, match name. This is kind of this is what's going to show up on the sign. Now you can do one dash one, one dash two. That's kind of what Hypixel does, and uh, Tiger actually suggests that because it looks a little bit better on the sign, and then it references the arena ID, and then you want to do the minimum player so we're going to do two so we can do testing later and then you want to set your maximum player so let's just do 12. actually let's do eight i don't know so there we go match created and now running so we can join it using the command but we're not going to do the command yet we're going to come up here we're going to actually set the hub now so what we want to do is we want to enter in the quake admin hub setup Hub requires a region that is a cuboid where players can see their scoreboard and buy and customize their equipment when they are within the region. All right, so the first thing you need to do is you got to set one corner of this hub. Whoops. So we're going to go ahead and uh, set it down here, actually. So we're going to stand there. And then you set this again. First point set. And uh, we're going to fix that. Then we come over here and we're actually going to uh, put this up here. We're just going to go up a little bit. Oops. And there's a second point. Hub region set. And then you set the spawn. So we're going to go ahead and um, 
and there I am actually in the hub. So that's kind of cool. And you set the spawn. So there it is. So you got to set one corner of it, kind of like you do in World Edit or World Guard, and then set the high other corner of it, and then set your spawn in the middle. So now once you come into this area, which you can fly out of it, and then you get all of your items back. So you kind of want to make it so people can't leave this area, or um, you could run this alongside alongside uh, your other mini games or survival they just come into this and then they get their shop options which will go over how to customize that customizing your um your railgun and then record which i think is wins losses deaths all that stuff and then you start out with a thousand tokens that you can use to spend in the shop we'll go ahead and show you how that works in a bit here all right, so the next thing we want to do is we want to set our signs in the hub. So we want to uh, actually make a little bit uh, taller here. We want to set the sign, which you can still add stuff in here even though you're in a hub because I'm an admin, that kind of stuff. So we're going to do this. The signs are super easy to set up. You just do quake, bracket, and then the second line is your match ID. So that's the 1-1, not the arena ID. And uh, there we go. So now it, it grabs the name of it, shows the arena, it shows how many players can uh, join there and all that. So let's um, let's do this. How about before we get into configuring the shop, which is kind of the biggest part of this whole this whole deal is I'm going to set myself back to survival. Let me get my uh, test dummy in here and we can show you how the uh, matches go. They're set to for a win condition of 25 kills, which you can set in the in the config file which i will be going over very shortly here all right so you can't see my test dummy yet he's he's in there but we're gonna join him uh have him join a match so now uh, on his screen it says waiting for players players needed to join and you can see 1-8 in there so we're gonna go ahead and join so game is ready starting in 30 seconds let's go find him see if he's showing up yet oh there he is he kind of blends in with the the house so 20 seconds, you can set that as well in the configuration file, which we will be going over here uh, in a moment. So here we go. The countdown has started. Two, one. So uh, you got to switch to your railgun. Let's go find him real quick. There's his name tag. So this works the same way. Is The railgun is this the, 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 this is the default railgun. Everything's set up like that. You just right-click and kill him. And then they respawn. And they uh, let's let's do a death from his. So scoreboard is one zero on the side. Oops. And the cooldown is the XP bar, which is pretty cool. So um, let me uh, just wrap this up. Let's get into the config file. Where did... okay, so here we are in our configuration file. So like always, you got all of these options in here. You want to go into your plugins. You want to go into Quake. And then these are the configurations that you have. So your config file is basically what's going to be the overall settings of it. Um, the data, I think this is this is uh, just the player data save that actually is not created at default. It's not, it's not created until a person starts a match. The GUI is the layout of your shop, and the items is the items in your shop. So let's hop in. I have all of these open already. So the first thing you want to do is change the name. I changed it here. Now here's where you set your scores to win 25 and then a countdown of 30 seconds. Default points is zero and default tokens. That's what they start with when they start the match. So if you want to start this completely at zero, you can set that to zero. And so then new players, that's what they get. Um, and then here's the rewards that you set up in there. And now here's the arenas and then the matches and that will get filled in as you start setting that up. But all this is in there by default. So that's how many points you get per kill, how many tokens you get per kill, uh, points and tokens per win. So you actually don't even need a uh, economy plugin with this or vault. It has its uh, own built in like this. So now let's get into the GUI. Now you saw how this is laid out. Actually, you know what? This is getting ahead of us. Let's get into the items. That will be the first thing that we should look at. So this is how you can figure what is actually shown in the shop. And it's got an item number next to it. This is just a unique ID with it. Um, and then you set the type. And that's the name of it. Uh, you got the lore. That's what's going to show up when you hover over it. 
the name of it, the cost. Now this is a default item, so we're just going to leave that at zero. Uh, material case enchantment, uh, you can set that to true. Um, the site, now this is the lore. Now this material is rather interesting actually. So this material, this is a, a wooden hull. That's what's going to show up in there. So you can change that to be whatever you want. Now this one is the 351 at 11. Now usually when you're doing, you know, if you're using World Edit or whatever and you need to set a sub, um, like a color of that item, like the wool is all, um, what is it? I don't even know the number off the top of my head, but you do something colon and then the number after it, and that says that sets it to be the number. So 351 is ink or the color, and then you do at and then 11 that sets it to yellow. So basically, you can do this with any other item that has this. So instead of a colon, like you do in World Edit, this will be an at symbol, and then this will be whatever that material is. And then 401 is a firework rocket. And then you can set the ball shape here. Now this is set to ball by default. Now there's five shapes available. There's ball and then there's ball large. And then there's star, burst, and creeper. So those all got to be capitalized. Then the last bit here is your trigger. So this is the default normal trigger. Couple things about this. Now the material is 77. That is a stone button. Now the trigger amount, this is the number that's going to show up on top of it while it's in the store. I'll show you a picture right here. That's what's going to show up on top of it. So since this is a 1.5, we set it to 15. So if you want a 1.4, probably set that to 14. A 1.0, probably set it to 10. Now the trigger speed is measured in ticks per second. Now in Minecraft, uh, everything is measured in ticks. If you haven't dealt with that yet, the, the conversion is 20 ticks per one second. So 30 is one and a half seconds. So we're going to set a custom trigger here, and then we're going to show it to you at the end here. So we just copy, paste, and then you change this to... Now this is all got to be incremental, so we're going to go up by five, and we're going to say... Um, we're going to call it causes trigger, I guess, and 1.0 reloading speed. Now, if you want to do multiple lines of lore, you can just do this and uh, second line. Yeah. And same material we want there. And we're actually going to change this to 10 and then we're going to change this to 20. So that means that is 20 seconds. So basically, if you want to figure out what the reload speed should be, you just do, um, I think, 1.5 times 20 would give you would give you the number right 1.5 times 20 yes so 1.5 so if you want to do 1.4 times 20 that's going to tell you to set it to 28 and so on and so forth so now that we have that set we have to add it to the shop so let's head over to the GUI this is the layout of the shop so this is the overall shop rows this is what it looks like by default so now you can notice they got these ids right here one two three four that re references the item numbers there so we want to change this to five so that means the um that trigger that custom trigger that we added is going to be in here so once we've added to the overall shop we want to set it to the modification area as well and so that's what this trigger rose is so we're going to set that to five so once you've purchased it it will show up in here and then you can modify it I'll show you a picture of how that looks right here. So that so you can see that number five now shows up in there. And then um, the, the trigger then shows up in the configuration of that. So then the last bit that we need to do is uh, the permissions. So the per permissions is pretty straightforward. Um, like I said, it kind of works by default. Um, you don't really need to give your players any permission nodes. By default, they have options to teleport to the hub, to join, to to run the join, to leave a current match. And I put all these commands up here. Um, and if the, the hub is not set, they can actually access the shop with shop, customizer, um, and open the record with Quake record. Now, if you want your admins to be able to modify anything, uh, you probably you need to give them quake.admin um, and then that will allow them to create arenas, create matches, signs, all that stuff. 
So that's all I got for you guys. Hopefully you guys found that helpful. Um, please leave a like below, uh, comment, and be sure to subscribe because I do these every week. If you have questions, feel free to ask. I'll do my best to answer them. Otherwise, go check out the author's page and ask him there. He actually keeps up on this and is working on it. Um, so yeah, this is all. This is Cos from McFriends reminding you guys all, enjoy the game. God bless. No. Oh, nice for laying, lining that up, gentlemen. Oh, hey, who's going to reload first? Oh, too what? Late. I'm in second place. <laughs> oh, oh,